welcome everyone who's joined uh, just letting everyone know we will start in a minute uh, allow people to give a few more minutes to join so thank you for joining and we will start very shortly All right, I think we can join. We have a good uh, number of people here. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Tony Joy. Uh, I'm from Sound Particles. Uh, today I'm joined by Aldo Lamana, the incomparable Aldo from Steinberg. How's it and going? My... Yeah. So yeah, thank you everyone. And I'm also joined by Joao Franco uh, from Sound Particles, who's my colleague, and Mariana as well. Uh, both of them will be helping us moderate the chat. If you have any questions, don't be shy, uh, ask questions. Uh, we want to keep this a very casual, uh, okay, let me start again. I, we want to keep this very casual and useful webinar for all of us sound professionals. So again, thank you for joining us. Uh, to give you an idea of the agenda, we will be first talking about the why of we do things in mixing music or sound design. You know, we all pan things, we all move things around. Have you ever wondered why do we do that and why is it effective, right? So we will talk about that. We will talk about some amazing features inside of Nuendo that we can use along with sound particle products. And then we will touch upon few other things and then wrap uh, with a Q&A towards the end. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna jump in and share my screen real quick. All right, so let's talk about dynamic panning inside of Nuendo. So, like I mentioned just a moment ago, we all pan things, we all move things around. There's a psychological reason why this is effective. And I won't go too deep into this slide, but there's a psychological reason behind why all this works. So in 1999, uh, Harvard actually did an experiment that you can actually participate by Googling up this uh, title. Actually, if you Google up Invisible Gorilla Harvard, you will show, see this video on YouTube. And the video was very simple, a uh, short video in which six people, three wearing white shirts, three wearing black shirts, were pass passing basketballs around. And the participants are asked to count the number of times the ball is passed, either between the people wearing white shirts or the black shirts. And during this few minutes, what they actually miss is a massive gorilla, someone dressed as a gorilla coming onto screen, standing in the middle, thumping their chest and walking away most people missed it because they were so focused on counting the ball that's being passed. And when it comes to audio, we have a similar effect. Most of you might be aware of the term cocktail party effect. Uh, this is the audio equivalent of our eyes falling with that basketball thing. You want to try this for yourself. Next time when you are in a group of people, let's say 60, 80 people, if you look at one person farther away, your ears will automatically tune in on just that conversation while ignoring people even standing right in front of you. This is called cocktail party effect. Our brain has the ability to focus on sounds that our eyes or other senses are focused on, right? So why does it do that? Why can't our brain process so many conversations at the same time? Uh, the reason actually is actually biology. Uh, our brain has limited resources, needs to be energy efficient. So most habits are on autopilot. 
So if we are looking at someone, our brain figures out, okay, we are focusing on that person, ignore everybody else, focus on that audio only. So non-habits and non-sounds are actually often run by the brain on autopilot to save energy. It's that simple. So now bringing this all back to audio and music and panning, why does it matter? Let's talk about that. So remember, our brain ignores predictable and ongoing sound. A good example is our heartbeat or the tick-tock of a clock uh, that's in your room. The sound is actually hitting your ears all the time, but our brain knows, ah, it's in a pattern, it's safe, it's a non-sound, ignore it. Why spend energy focusing on a tick-tock of a clock 24-7? Same with our heartbeat, uh, but at the same time, if our heartbeat start, uh, starts to beat very slow or very fast, then immediately our brain starts focusing on that sound because it's not predictable anymore. There's something different. Same with the clock. If it starts accelerating very fast, your brain will immediately latch onto that sound. So this is the psychology of sound or how our brain analyzes sounds, right? So. As the last bullet point on the slide shows, our brain will latch on to any sound that suddenly has a change in pitch, loudness, duration, or spatial positioning. That's why panning works. When you leave a sound static in space, let it be stereo, let it be 51, binaural, does not matter. If you leave a sound static, our brain gets used to it. After a while, it's like, let's ignore it. Having said that, overdoing this won't help this either, right? So, light bulb moment. Uh, we can move things around, but if everything is moving, it has a similar effect. So the key here is to add a little movement and then stop it, right? So if you're mixing sound effects, for example, you might have 50 sounds. You, if you want to pull the attention to a specific sound, all you have to do is change the pitch, loudness, duration, or the location which is spanning for a few moments and then have it rest again because our brain, once it latches on, it stays there for a few moments as long as it's inspiring. And all of us have been doing this for years as audio professionals. No matter if you work in post or if you work in music or sound design, we all automate volume, we all automate panning. It's actually for these reasons. Some of us might be aware why we are doing this, most of us are not aware why we pan things and why it works. So I thought it would be a good way to start this uh, webinar by introducing these concepts. And here at Sound Particles, uh, we excel at creating motion. That's what we are known for, right? So this is a screenshot of our flagship uh, Sound Particles workstation, where you can create millions of sounds to create soundscapes, which we will look at towards the end. But the primary focus of today's webinar are actually the plugins we make, right? With the amazing features inside of Nuendo, our plugins help you really supercharge your workflows when you're mixing sound or music, right? And not just in stereo, almost, excuse me, almost all the plugins we make are spatially agnostic. And what I mean by that is, you can come in mono, come out 7-1, you can come in 5-1, come out binaural. We will look into this in detail in a minute, but we support spatial audio from the ground up, any format you choose. Chances are we support it, right? Enough slides, uh, I'm going to now jump into Nuendo. So let's start with the first plugin we make. It's actually called Air, right? This is the plugin, uh, it does one thing and it does one thing right. It simulates air. So one of the first questions is why simulate air? And my question is why not? Let's think about this for a minute. If we have a helicopter far away in the sky, let's say about a mile away, it sounds different than when it's close to us. And the difference is the, mostly the high frequencies, right? Because air between my ears and the helicopter absorbs these high frequencies. It absorbs sounds, but starting heavily on the high frequencies again due to physics. So what this plugin does, if I have a helicopter sound here, it allows me to simulate distance with one note. So I can make it sound like the helicopter is now 5.8 miles away, or I can bring it back, right? 
So you can simulate air. And one of the questions I usually get is, oh, all it's doing is an EQ. Yes, all it's doing is an EQ, but we are doing it very well, very precisely. We've actually gone to the field and done the math on how much frequencies and which frequencies and how much should be uh, subtracted at that specific distance. So you get a realistic simulation. Your brain is fooled into thinking this helicopter is exactly at that feet because again, we did all that groundwork in the background. So fair enough, uh, sound is affected by air, all good. Now, what gets affected? So what affects air, right? Which is temperature and humidity. So we have that built in. So you can actually say, okay, today it was 80 degrees when it was recorded, humidity was about 20%. As you just saw, the curve actually changes. And of course, depending on where you live, you can change uh, the temperature to Celsius and same with the distance. One of my favorite features about this plugin is you actually have presets. So if you want to make this helicopter sound like it was in London in spring, you can choose the preset and we simulate the air in London and it will sound like the helicopter is actually in London. So when you're working on a project that might be set in a given location, you can actually simulate the air in that location, make your mixer sound or production sound super hyper realistic. And let's imagine you don't have that specific place in the list. Again, you can just enter those values manually and say it was 38 degrees that day with about 20% humidity and boom, you're done. So that was air. Again, very useful plugin. It does one thing and it does one thing very well, simulate air and simulate distance. So the next plugin I'm going to show you is called Space Controller. So this is a very cool app. It allows me to use my phone, right, with the app to start panning. So I now have the helicopter set to a distance. Now I can pan it around using my phone. How cool is that? So the way it works is it actually scans uh, for Bluetooth enabled devices and it just finds it automatically. And then the concept is that you imagine that this is a laser pointer. My phone is now almost like a laser pointer. So if I point it up to the ceiling, the sound is on the ceiling. I can point it down, it will be uh, down based, based on what formats I'm using for panning, right? Down or up, to the side, to the back, you get the idea. You can even spin the sound around in the space. And like I mentioned a moment ago, this plugin allows you to come in mono or stereo, all these formats, 9-1, 51712, the list is endless all the way to six or Rambisonics. And of course, it can come out by an oral too. So it allows you to go from one format to the other if you're working in a spatial audio setting. And before I hand over to Alu to give you a cool example, Space Controller also has another version that we make specifically for new window users called Space Controller OSC. And it actually has a new window 12 setting on it. What this allows me to do is actually use the Space Controller OSC app when I'm mixing in spatial using my phone. I can close my eyes and say I want the sound to be here and they can change the channel number and say I want this sound to be in this corner. Think about it, you can close your eyes and mix something you cannot do with a mouse unfortunately. So that's Space Controller OSC which allows you to not only use the native panel which means all this can be automated but it also allows you to do Dolby Atmos beds and objects, which is very powerful and something that Aldo will show you now for a few minutes. For sure. Thank you, Tony, for that introduction. Well, a warm welcome from all the Pro Audio team and Steinberg from Hamburg. I'm actually based on the headquarters. I'm a product specialist for Nuendo specifically, but of course I know QAs and all the good stuff. And um, yeah, I want I will show you how this is working with Nuendo. But before, because I'm not sure if everybody knows about Atmos and immersive audio, and I want to be in like everyone in, to be in the same page. So I just have a little bit of explanation beforehand because Atmos actually is a format that is coming 
from the films. So it was originally created for films, as you can see now. Um, though I hope you have enjoyed a movie where there were ceiling speakers, so you could feel the rain or maybe some <laughs> some mosquito going around or something. So it came from actually the movies, but there has been a shift lately, and um, their their motto is that music just changed forever. So it's basically an object-based immersive audio format for music production, which sounds, of course, very exciting. And I want to e explain how this works, just in case you are normally working in stereo or in 5.1. So what's the basis of Atmos? So let's do a little bit of an overview, very short one. And most of us know stereo. I could start on mono, but mono, I think we all know what mono means, just one speaker. Let's start with stereo, so two speakers. And um, 5.1 surround was the basically in, on a lot of films for years. For a long, so most of you probably will have enjoyed a 5.1 surround sound, even at home. And uh, what um, this, the next step is the 7.1 surround, which basically puts some speakers on the rear. So you can have some, com some sounds coming from the rear. So it's a little bit more immersive, right? So far, all this is 2D audio because we have only two axes. So the advantage of Atmos with the ceiling speakers is that now we have the height right so that will be one of the things that why they call it 3d audio so now that we have the height then there's two elements that are the main elements of the dolby atmos mix the 7.1 surround we just talked about where you have your rear speakers but still is on ear level so it's 2d still and the minimum setup Call, they call it Atmos bed, would be pulling two ceiling speakers. So if you have an Atmos uh, home, um, let's say there's some home solutions for Atmos, which basically have speakers like bouncing off your ceiling. But if you're in a studio, the minimum that you can do for a bed, for surround in immersive Atmos mix is 7.1 and two speakers. That's called the Atmos bed. So whenever I say Atmos bed, I'm talking about a 7.1.2 sound. And then you have the so-called objects. And then you can have more than 100 more speakers around. So you can really be creative and pan and manipulate the sound in a way that was actually never before like we, i was blown away the first time I, I heard it so this is coming to music now which is very exciting so uh, we have of course implemented in, into nuendo for films and for music and for that we have a special panel that has 3d audio cap capabilities and that's is the so-called VST multi-panner. So the OSC application will work with this multi-panner. If you're working on stereo, then you have the space controller plugin, which is great. You just move around your, your sound in the stereo field. If you want to go immersive, then you have the OSC application and it pairs with the VST multi-panner and you can put things on the height level also. And one thing to mention is that there is the need for a renderer for the Atmos productions. And th this is there's a very good reason why. The mix that you do will always get rendered in real time and will adapt to any theater. So if you have a theater with 24 speakers or 116 speakers, there's a renderer doing the work for you and it will pan things around with the metadata in real time. So that's why there's the need for the so-called Dolby Atmos renderer. 
There's a software solution from Dolby. There's a hardware solution, which is the one they use in the films that are pretty expensive. I, I hope you have one at home. But we implemented with Dolby, so it's not something we came alone and, and just tried to do it by ourselves. We implemented it with Dolby, so it has also basically is the same as the Dolby renderer, the hard the software version of the Dolby Atmos renderer inside Nuendo, and it comes with it, so you don't have to pay for it, which is a big advantage. So you need to have the renderer. So let's say you create the perfect mix. And the way it works is that you put everything to the renderer, you route it to the renderer, all the so-called beds, which is, you can think about it as the main mix of, of the movie or the audio, and then the objects. And with the objects is where you can get very creative and you can see you have many objects to play with. And at the end, there's just one file that is the delivery file. And this is called ADM. So these files contain all the metadata. In the Atmos world, in Dolby's world is, is called .atmos. It's the same. Even from people from Dolby, they say .atmos or ADM is the same. There's actually converters online that are for free. So if you want to deliver for Netflix or for one of the streaming platforms, that have the capability to have immersive sound, you will deliver that into an ADM file. An ADM file stands for audio definition model. And it's an open standard, which is super exciting because in the past, it used to be that some companies had the monopoly of some format. So it's an open standard for the production and exchange of of object-based audio content. So it becomes platform independent. And it's actually, it started some years, but it will keep going. And some good news, just so you know, the European Broadcasting Union, for example, has a free renderer. So if you ever have an ADM file, which you can find on the internet in movies, you can download the free so-called EAR, so the EVU ADM renderer from the European Broadcasting Union, and you can enjoy the ADM wherever you are. So it will render the file with all the metadata and all the panning. So that was my brief explanation. <laughs> I want to make sure that everybody is on the same page and what Atmos means, because some people, might not have known what it, it means. So right now I have a stereo project and let's say you are an artist and you want to deliver for these platforms, but you want to deliver into this new standard, into this new immersive, exciting standard. And then you have to deliver an ADM file. So this is just a stereo song, as you can see. This is the interface for Nuendo. Most, most DAWs look similar. Uh, you can customize it so it will look like this, like most DAWs, but I'm just having over here the inspector, which means that I have information of every track I select. I have the mixing console here, and I have the control room, which is basically the monitoring part. Of course, if you have many monitors you can just spread this around but just, i'm in a laptop so i have a stereo file a stereo project sorry of an amazing artist called aldo lamana <laughs> and i will just play a little bit so you get an idea of what it will sound like So let's say you want to deliver into in an this mix, the stereo mix, to an immersive mix, which is so far three major platforms are um, you can deliver to three major platforms. I'm pretty sure in the future it will be more. So um, the thing 
how you connect to the app, to the space controller app, is going through the studio. And you can go into the OSC object position tracking and compare to the space controller plugin, this will give you the height positioning of your phone also. So if I go here, you have to make sure that you have the IP address into your settings, into the app. So that's very pretty important. Something that's very important also that happened to me once, I deactivated the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and it didn't work. I didn't know why, but so you have to have your phone within the network and you just activate it through the IP, the unique IP of the computer. So when you click activate, you are ready to start mapping. As you can see here, there's objects and you have up to 64 instances. So you have a lot to play with. Okay, so um, let's say now in Nuendo, you want to go immersive into Atmos. So there's a window, most of the Nuendo special features are found into the project menu. And that's why I wanted to explain to you what ADM is because there's a menu that's called project that has one thing one function called ADM author for Dolby Atmos. If I open that, then if you are lucky enough to have an external renderer, you can select it, even the hardware. So it's made also for very professional people working on films. We have also implemented internally our render coming from Dolby. So we have the setup assistant over here. And this makes things so much easier because it used to be a case that you have to route things to a same one four and then make the beds. That's not the case anymore. If I press on setup assistant, then it will give me some options. For example, I want now to, if I go to my studio, I can see that in my connections, I have a stereo output. And I could open a 714 output and start routing manually if you want. You're free to do it. But the assistant will do it for you. So it will create a 714, which is for Atmos. And I will add the main mix. So we will make it um, the main mix and it will insert the internal renderer in it and also i will tell it to please add the channels into a bed already a bed consists of 10 channels is my main mix and then you can take separate elements apart and make them as objects so you can pan voices or sounds or any piece of um, any synthesizer of anything you can pan anything into objects so I will route everything over there and it will create it automatically. So now you can see the render just appeared. And this is actually pretty cool because you don't have to pay for it. If you have an idea that will you that or not all of them, but there's a few of them that you have to pay some money for this. So we have it installed and you can see that now this is the this is my main bed so if i play the track then now i can see that it's enabled into my monitoring section i can go 714 and i can see that now i have everything going into my atmos renderer so what if i want to create an object that pans around and that's why that's how i will use the osc app this object here that which i may name object to make it very very obvious is a white noise we do have a function which makes things very easy into the adm offering for dolby atmos window and that function if you select a track 
or multiple tracks could be also. You can click into functions and say create objects from selected tracks. And that will create an object. So now my white noise is being taken out of the bed and now I can pan it around into the height level or which can also you can pan multiple beds so you, you can have a bed for for the main mix a bed for folly whatever you can pan it's not only limited to objects you can pan even 5.1 with it so now that i have one object this will be the simplest example then i can go to my OSC object positioning tracking, which connects with my phone. And I can assign such object to the first, let's say the first insert because you, you have up to 64. So as you can see, all the panning they're all changed from stereo to the BST multi track, the BST multi panner. Sorry. So now I'm in object mode and I'm able to pan things around with my phone. Height is also included. And of course, if you write automation, then you can just start easily panning things around. So this is a very powerful, powerful solution for using your phone as a tracking device and not waste too much time, neither clicks. If you have worked into post-production music, you know you're, there's many clicks involved, this saves time. Of course, you have to press the app for it to work. That's one thing also that's worth noting. If you don't press it, it doesn't work. And then you can, if you want, you can just start assigning even more objects and it will just write the automation right away. So that's basically, it's as easy as that. I went a little bit far with the Atmos. You can do it with 5.1, but the good thing is that it's very easy to connect with the app. And even if you're doing a mix that is not 714, it's 71 or, or 5.1, you can do it like this. And then whenever you're ready and you like your mix, you can just go to the ADM windows and just export your ADM file. And this will contain everything, all the metadata, all the project structure, and you can open it in actually multiple DAWs. So it, it's a very powerful new way even to exchange uh, sounds between, let's say, the sound design department, sound design department, the music department, the or and and any other department. If you're working into a big post-production house, or if you're making music, then of course you can just have a lot of fun with this. And I must also say that it works also with Nuendo 11, so it's not only exclusive with 12. It's also working with Nuendo 11. So that's the way it works from my side. I hope you, I hope it was not too much. <laughs> you can always rewatch the video whenever you want, and that you can always download the demo and try it for yourself. So. Thank you, Aldo. That, that was very, very useful. Uh, you know, I've worked on different uh, digital audio workstations uh, in Atmos format. And as you rightly said, one of the biggest challenges in the beginning was that, okay, you have the Dolby Atmos software standalone working either on the same computer or on a different computer. Yes. Right. The fact that you have the renderer built into new window is huge, right? I don't even know how to express my gratitude. It's yep. so, it makes your life so easier. And here at Sound Particles, what we wanted to do was supercharge even that, take it to even higher level where, like I was mentioning earlier, when you work in immersive format, what I prefer to do as an engineer producer is, I want to close my eyes and feel, be immersed in the sound. So if I can close my eyes and point my phone to say, okay, I want the sound to be here, the next channel, I want to be here. 
that that is the best case scenario for my workflow, right? Uh, so yes, sure. there is a setup involved, like uh, Aldo mentioned, but if you look at the space controller OAC user manual, it's only a few pages actually. So it's pretty it's, straightforward, right? And one thing I want to mention that I almost forgot is that you have the binaural option. So you can just start working in Wendo in binaural, and this is actually the binaural from Dolby. So you can save a lot of time and money if you start doing it in the binaural and then you go to a certified Atmos studio and you redefine your mix. So there's this chance to go binaural so you can use it on your headphones. Absolutely. Great point, uh, because not everyone has access to an Atmos room all the time, right? If you have 11 speakers and a sub, great, good for you. But sometimes we find ourselves needing to work on headphones and the good thing about the built-in renderer as Aldo just showed you can switch between formats right you can go from headphones walk into a stage uh, in Hollywood and just switch off the binaural go to physical outputs go back and forth without having to rewire or spend four hours rewiring yes I spent four, almost four hours once rewiring a session to go from uh, one format to the other so and thanks to oh, yeah for sure, I'm, I'm seeing a question that uh, there's somebody who actually wants to see and hear how it sounds and how it pans. I will go to binaural now. I'll have my white noise. I will pan it around. Let's remember we are going through Zoom, so it will not be as immersive as you would expect it when you have your computer. But let's try that a little bit so that people know. So I have my object here. I can pan it around. I will write, they're also asking about automation. I will write the automation. This is actually for all tracks. I can do that, or I can just do it into this track if I want to. I'll just put it like this, and I will pan the thing around with the OSC app, and then we'll see how it uh, behaves in Nuendo into the automation. So let's play that. Okay, so sorry about the microphone. We're live. So <laughs> I'm gonna show uh, the use automation on the selected track, and now you can see that over here I have the automation that I just wrote. And then, of course, you can go back and if you want to change something, it's easy, easily to change. Yeah. Two things I wanted to mention. So in the settings, you can even uh, turn the option on the app to tap. So instead of having to hold it all the time, you can actually tap. It stays on. You can keep panning. And I have to test it uh, inside the new window, but I'm pretty sure you can actually even use two fonts if you wanted to <laughs> and uh, mess with both objects. So yeah, the possibilities are endless. Uh, with that, uh, Aldo, uh, do you mind if I switch back to the plugins and take the screen please. share? Yes, please. All right. So coming back to the fun of motion, uh, one of the most used effects that uses motion is Doppler, right? So here at Sound Particles, we actually make a fantastic Doppler plugin. So first I'm going to actually uh, turn off the effect and play the source file. It's a car engine sound idling, so there's no movement. I'm assuming you heard that, right? There's no movement. And now I'm going to turn on the plugin. Right, so it was the same sound right it just added a doppler so of course you get all the basic controls of any doppler plugin you might have used before source speed acceleration direction and of course you can change units uh, depending on which part of the world uh, you live in you also get distance attenuation but in addition to all these basic features we give you a few more tools to supercharge your workflow so first and foremost you have the air eq built into the doppler Remember the air EQ I showed you a few minutes earlier? You can change the temperature and the humidity so you can determine 
in which country, which city the car is passing through, which can be very useful when you're trying to create realistic sounding sound design. You also have a microphone distance. Aha, how useful is that? So this icon right here is the microphone that you can actually turn. You can also tell this plugin, okay, is the mic operator standing right next to the street or is that person standing far away, which actually changes the Doppler effect as we all know. So you can simulate a virtual person standing there with the mic and you can rotate the mic. Why is rotating the mic useful? Remember I said we are a format agnostic spatial audio company. So this plugin, you can come in mono and then come out stereo, 5.0, 5171 or 91 Dolby Atmos or all the way up to third order ambisonics. This is why the mic rotation matters. I can actually rotate the mic all the way to the back. So the Doppler happens behind on off axis of the microphone. So it's, why is this useful? You might have a car scene where the car is st starting in the middle of the screen, leaving the screen to the corner and then moving around. By angling the mic this way, you can actually simulate that. You can come in mono and then come out spatial. The plugin does Doppler in spatial for you, which is exceptionally useful. Last but not the least, you have the manual time to peak, but you can also link the Doppler to time code. So when you're walking on working with picture, you all know how this usually goes, right? You play the clip in loop, okay, the Doppler is happening like half a second late, you nudge it, play it again, 10 minutes later, you're pulling on your hair, not anymore. You click now on time code, it links the Doppler to time code. So that was the next plugin I want to show you. Now let's talk about even more fun panning that hooks your brain. Remember all that psychology talk we did uh, initially? Uh, we spoke about how the brain will latch on if there's natural realistic movement. And I present to you energy panner. So what does this panner do? I'm going to solo the track. Uh, uh, I have Tyco drums here. Right? What is happening here? The plugin is actually panning the sound based on loudness. Aha! So, unlike an automated panner, you've seen automated panner that just goes like a clock, right? Again, it's cool when you hear it, but when you put it in a mix, suddenly it disappears because your brain is like, oh, that's following a pattern like a clock. Let me ignore it. This plugin, on the other hand, it pans based purely on loudness. So I can say I want this sound to start at the speakers. Or I can flip it and say, I want this sound to start in front of my face, even if it's in stereo, right? You can say, I want it to be closer when it's soft, and then I want it to go away from me when it gets louder. Even more so in Dolby Atmos, right? You can actually say, I want the Tyco drums to be right here when it's soft. As it hits louder, I want it to open up into the room. And you get that, right? So you can actually say, I want it to start from a custom point and move towards the speakers. Or you can say, I want to start at a custom point and move to a custom point or to speakers. Again, you get to choose how you want it to behave. We can have it go in circles. In this workflow, uh, I don't have an example for this one, but one of the things that you could use this for is actually dialogue, right? Audiobooks or dialogue for a movie or a drama. Think about it. Usually dialogue stays literally on your nose especially with audiobooks and podcasts. Again, our brain, it's like, oh, it's right there. It's not moving. It's not a person. Ignore it. If you add something like this, right, it's going to be very subtle. It's not going to be a day and night difference when you bypass the plugin. But what this does, even in stereo, is it simulates the head movement, right? We all move our head when we talk. No one sits still and talks ever. It's not for 30 minutes at least. So by doing something like this, our tools allow you to create motion in your mixes. That's realistic, not just cool, right? Having things jump around is cool, but how effective is it? These tools allows you to go as finished as you want to be or as crazy as you want to go. You can have things go around if you want to do like that, right? And in the pan mode, 
as you just saw it starts here and starts traveling up that path then comes back when there is no signal if i go to the sliding mode however it keeps traveling that path Not ideal for drums but works like a charm on synthesizers and electric guitars that have lots of movement and of course as, as it goes without saying all these plugins work in all these plugins work in spatial formats too so you can actually come in whatever format you want to like I mentioned earlier and you can come out studio binaural lcrs quad 512 71 712 all the way to third order ambisonics so that's energy panel uh, to recap the plugin pans based on loudness uh, one thing i want to clarify is yes there are parameters that looks like it came from a compressor uh, but there is no compression happening whatsoever the threshold determines when it should start panning and the ratio determines how much it should pan okay and of course the attack and the release determines how fast or how slow it should move and if you're using uh, it in a spatial format you can actually even have workflows where you can have the vocals uh, automated by, by this plugin so when she sings soft she's right here next to you and when she sings loud she opens up into the room and there's no way an automated dump plugin can achieve that so when you put this on vocals like that it feels like that person is actually breathing with you try it okay so uh, that is energy panner and the next one i want to show you is the brightness panner so same concept right as the energy panner but instead of loudness we are using frequency so you can actually have pitch brightness or even midi input determining the pan this is exceptionally powerful because you can actually have this inserted after a virtual instrument so when you play the arpeggios or something you can actually say anything i play high should be in the back so when you play real time the plugin is going to pan and map things spatially for you and even if you work on stereo it can do amazing things like what i'm about to show you so i'm going to solo this track right here this is the original sound Now I'm turning on the plugin. I have it in sliding mode. Isn't that cool? So remember, this is actually happening in stereo slash binaural, and you are listening to this over Zoom. Imagine what this can do in 5.1 or 7.1 or again just in studio. It does a fantastic job. Uh, I love using this plugin uh, on anything that has lots of texture. Uh, it allows you to have that kind of shear, not shearing, but panning purely based on the frequency content or brightness. And the last plugin I want to show you is actually called Density. So this is a plugin, this is a chorus plugin uh, on steroids uh, designed for spatial. So again, let me bypass the plugin on my playhead and this is the original sound. And now with the plugin. You get the idea. So we are creating a chorus, but in spatial, again, we are a spatial audio company. Of course, we do amazing things in stereo, but we are also detaching formats from spatial audio. We want everyone to be able to work in spatial, even if you're working in stereo. So this plugin has three tabs. The basic tab, you know, self-explanatory, you can choose between a large ensemble or a small ensemble. You have basic controls. Detune mode allows you a little bit more control. And the multi-pitch mode gives you the most controls, which is what I just demoed to you. You can create modules uh, and you can actually tell the system how, how much 
it should change the pitch so you can actually create harmonies. So I have this module creating two octaves down and four particles, as you can see in the radar display right here. Uh, this one is creating four, this one is creating nine, this one is creating 16, and it's of course color coded. So you actually can see what each module is creating and clearly you can mute and mess with it to create your own custom harmonies. Then you also have the, how much it should detune, the delay range, grain size, so forth and so on, and the voice speed, how much it should move spatially or should it not move at all, and position divergence, how, how open do you want it to be, right? So one of the most uh, use cases that we hear a lot from our customers is they actually record choirs in stereo, bring it in, and you know where I'm going with this, right? <laughs> you can come in stereo and actually again come out spatial. So you can come out 5.1 uh, with the stereo choir that you recorded because this plugin again can stay in stereo and do fantastic stuff. It can also with this one click switch and enable you to go spatial because this chorus that's being created is created in spatial. So let's again hear it once more. This is the original sound. Pretty cool, right? So this was the last plugin I want to show you. And this is also a good segue to quickly show you uh, our flagship product and another product that we make at Sound Particles. So again, you probably noticed I was calling these dots particles. And the terminology comes from our flagship software after which the company is named after called Sound Particles, right? Uh, this is what it looks like. It's a standalone workstation. And if you've seen uh, any of these movies, you already heard sound particles, right? So all these major movies have used sound particles to create sound design and soundscapes. And in a nutshell, what sound particles does is CGI for sound. The whole concept is you probably know that there's particle systems in visual animation. If you want to create a forest of trees, you don't have animators drawing 100,000 trees by hand they would draw four or five trees, give it to a particle system, which will look at those trees and create similar but different trees to create a forest. It's not copy pasting it, right? Because if you copy paste, what happens is again, your brain being smart, it will say, oh, that's a pattern, it's a copy paste. So it actually creates similar but different trees. Same concept here for sound. So this example I'm going to show you is actually my flask, my hydro flask. Uh, I tapped on it, I recorded the source files, right? So I have, that's the only two source files I'm using right here. So if I click on this track, we can listen to the source file. So that's the source file, first one. Second one, very similar. And then I'm telling sound particles, create 20 particles per every second I'm gonna hit play, right? So first, uh, second will give you 20 particles, next one you'll have about 40. It keeps adding up. Again, it's not going to play the same file over and over. It's going to take that file, then create a new particle, a new brand new source file with any modifiers I can give it. I can make it move like I'm making it move right here. I can have each particle to have random gain, random delay, random EQ, random grain, Random pitch, uh, I'm not going to go too deep into this. Uh, if you're interested, of course, you know, join uh, webinars that we actually do at Sound Particles. But I want to give you a quick example. So I'm going to hit play. So I have two tracks here. Both are using those two source files only. Pretty cool, right? And it, it all took me all of five minutes to create that actually. And uh, one thing before I move from sound particles I want to show is how did we listen to it? So we created these two tracks. There's particles in three dimensional space. How did we listen to it? Just like in animation, they have virtual cameras. We use virtual microphones. So I have three microphones in here. I have a stereo mic uh, right here. I have a 5.1 mic. Then I also have a Dolby Atmos mic which I am listening to using binaural. That's how you just listen to an Atmos mic in binaural, 
Now that's what that sounds like. So sound particles, just to recap, allows you to create massive soundscapes. It can be 10 meters wide, it can be 10 miles wide. If you're working on a battle scene, for example, right? you can create, you can import 10 or 20 footsteps and shouts and then ask the system to create 10,000 or 100,000 particles if you wanted to. And all you do is hit render and then go to town. <laughs> so it's a very easy to use sound design platform. Uh, if you're interested, go to soundparticles.com and get the download, test drive it, let us know how you like it. Last but not the least, uh, we also have a product called Explorer. Uh, this is a free software, right? It's a database management software for your sound, sound files. It's a read-only application, so we don't touch or mess with your metadata on your precious sound libraries. Uh, we respect that very much. So you can drag and drop your folders into Explorer it reads and analyzes all the files. It has a few unique features. One, it allows you to look at energy and brightness content. So if I'm looking for a soundscape that is around 800 Hertz, I don't even have to hit play. I can actually look at it and say, okay, it's too dark for me or I want something brighter at 2.7 kilohertz. You can visually go through sound files. Of course, you get a waveform preview but most importantly, us being a spatially format agnostic company, this application supports spatial audio files. As you can see, this one I've selected is a 5.1 file, which also has a cloud icon. Aha, that's something we released just a few days ago. It's a cloud service. Uh, you can download the application for free. Like I said, it's free. Uh, the cloud is actually a paid service, but you can still preview it. Uh, you can just install the application. You'll still see all the cloud options. And if you hit spacebar, this is actually a 5.1 file, but you can actually listen to it in binaural too, because we have a very comprehensive mixer built into it, right? So I can actually turn on binaural and also have ambisonics decoding, bass management, binaural monitoring. It's pretty powerful, especially for a free software. So if I hit uh, spacebar right now. We just monitored a 51 file through binaural over Zoom. Or you can change that or you can convert it, right, to any format that you want it to be. You can move it to stereo. You can extract just the center channel if you wanted to. And of course, you can export it to Nuendo. So you like a file, just hit spot to Nuento and it will actually import it to the track you have selected in Nuento. Again, making your creative life easier instead of spending hours exporting, renaming, re-importing, format converting, we take care of it for you. We reduce the clicks uh, and the swipes you have to do while you are being creative. Left brain stuff is cool, but when your right brain is trying to be creative, we firmly believe that you should be able to just be creative and create sounds and music. So uh, that's uh, all I want to share with you all. I hope this was very helpful. Uh, and I wonder if we have any uh, Q&A questions that needs to be shown. Uh, Joao. I do have two that I'm ready to answer. Okay. There was a question about uh, the OSC application in Cubase. If Cubase had the ability to do it, and uh, it's a Nuendo exclusive. So I have here a QS project, this this Nuendo. In Nuendo, you can see that I have the OSC object position tracking option into the studio. QS, uh, that is not there yet. I'm, I would not say that it will definitely not be there because QS tends to get a lot of features from Nuendo but so far it's a Nuendo 12 exclusive and the other one i saw is that it, if it will work with ambisonics and fortunately it does so i just open nice. up Ambisonic project and then you can see that i'm using my phone to pan things into ambisonics perfect 
And one thing I also wanted to mention, we have a small gift for everybody. So we actually are offering a 25% discount on all the plugins and the plugin bundles we make at Sound Particles. Uh, we will put the code in the chat. So, you know, as a gesture of gratitude for, as a thank you for joining us today, we want to give you that code. Uh, so if you'd like to purchase any of the Sound, uh, Sound Particles plugins, please make sure you use the code. And I must say also uh, for the QS persons and also for anyone that has any other DAW, currently we have a Nuendo cross grade sale if you're coming from any other DAW and it's 40%. So if you even coming from QS or any other DAW, then you have a 40% off until February 13th. So just to let you aware that part and South Particles is nice enough to have that advantage of having the 20% off. We also have an action going on now for people that want to join Wendo and com are coming from other DAWs. That's awesome. Yeah, so yeah, we are happy to provide the 25%. And uh, just keep in mind that code will be active for three days. So just to jump in with some a couple of questions from our um, panel. One of them was, uh, I think you already answered, Aldo, mm -hmm. about uh, does the workflow of that you used on Nuendo also worked on Cubase? I think that's mostly answered. Uh, I actually uh, answered wrong one question when I said that it worked on Cubase and Nuendo. I wanted to say it worked on Nuendo 11 and Nuendo 12, uh, the space controller I see. Um, other question was, uh, to you, Tony, uh -huh. uh, if Space Controller is able to control uh, Ambisonics 2, and uh, if, if it's able to send to Ambisonics 2, and on that regard, I also uh, question if it's able, if our plugins can do that too, mm -hmm. to use sound and send it to Ambisonics. Uh, right. I think you already shown that it's able to do on the panners, but if you want to answer on the Space Controller too, feel free to. Yes. So uh, the answer is yes, I'm actually opening it up right here. So on Space Controller, you can go all the way up to sixth order ambisonics. So the answer is yes. Uh, keep in mind, there's two versions of Space Controller. One is a standalone plugin installer that you can buy from Sound Particles. It's part of the 6FX bundle as well. Uh, that does stereo formats uh, and binaural. It can also do Dolby Atmos beds, but keep in mind, the one that Aldo showed earlier to control objects, that is Space Control OSC, which is an iOS app, uh, which you have to buy separately on the App Store. So two different products. One is called Space Controller. The other is called Space Controller OSC. And actually, uh, besides that, we also have two plugins that are controlled by the Space Controller app, not the Space Controller OSC, which is the Space Controller Studio and the Standard. Yes, and yes. they have uh, the studio have way more channels than the standard. The standard they have a limited number of channels. The studio goes to uh, a lot more. Uh, I also have a question for you, Tony. Uh, someone asked if if you were able to show uh, the density models working on solo uh, to just hear one of the one of the modules if it's Absolutely. if you were able to show it. Let me share my screen again. In the meantime, Joao, uh, can we paste the code uh, for the discount? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I'm pretty oh, sure Mariana will do that in a moment. Perfect, thank you. So, can you share my, uh, see my screen? Density. So, let me solo density. Here we have it. So, let's hear it. Let me turn it off, original file. Uh, in the basic mode, uh, small ensemble. Uh, large ensemble, I'll just uh, remove the bass maybe. And then detune mode. So I can increase the number of voices. Uh, 
And one cool thing you can do here is actually you can have the regular uh, playback, reverse playback or both. And then of course you can also just kill the input just to hear what the plugin is doing. And the original being pretty wicked, right? <laughs> Yeah, and the multi-pitch, of course, so I'm actually going to kill the input. Well, turning on the plugin would help. That's just what the plugin is doing, and of course... And it's playing reverse as well, so I can try regular. And I can go back to stereo, stereo in, stereo out. And you see immediately the back collapses, right? The moment you go from binaural to stereo, it actually just collapses down. Same thing if you go 5.1 or 7.1.2, you'll actually feel uh, the plugin in three dimensions and also moving subtly to hook your brain to going, wow, that's immersive. I hope uh, that helped. <laughs> Yes, if any, if anyone wants to give it a try, you can also feel free to uh, do the trial version, uh, which is free. You have 30 days to test it because uh, I think we are kind of running short of time. Uh, so any other questions, feel free to send to our support team too. Uh, and yeah. I think that's it then. So Aldo, any last words before we wrap? No, I just want to thank you for doing this for sure. And uh, I see a question from Antonio Gil uh, or Gil, I'm, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, about the ARA support, A-R-A. And um, I will definitely, because he's wondering if there's could be uh, support from in between sound particles and Nuendo like that, like with Wavelet, for example, I will definitely talk with the programmers and the product owners about this because that will be the sound designer's dream that'll be awesome so, yes for sure um i want to see it there so um count on that i will try <laughs> yes yeah hopefully there'll and be more collaborations so happening yeah i mean thank you indeed to everyone keep the feedback coming you know for both all of our companies you know uh we live and try one feedback and you know I, I think I forgot to mention one of the cool thing is Aldo right now is in Berlin uh, Joao and Mariana are in Portugal and I am in sunny Los Angeles so in this is a global community thank you so much uh, for coming and joining us today uh, for the support and we look forward to having you soon in another webinar so thank you again have a good day or afternoon or evening depending on where you are thank you so very much bye bye Bye, everyone.